Welcome to the Millennial Network Podcast. Now your host, Coach Danny Renee. Hi, what's up, y'all? Coach Danny Renee here, and this is a live recording of the Millennial Network Podcast. The reason I'm doing this is because why does investing make sense? Investing makes sense for all of us, especially millennials. Why? Because of half of America's over over half of Americans. I cannot get that out today. Does not have enough. Does not have enough money saved. So this is why it's important. Most people uh, think that when it comes to saving their money, you he- you hear the term savings a lot. And I love the fact that so many people are getting you know more verse into um, you know investing their money and they're learning how to do stocks and, and different things. And I was listening to something the other day, and it was like the most profound. It's better to get into a fund or something that has proven either to pace with the stock market or there has been some that has outpaced the stock market. But it's sometimes a lot better and a lot less stressful if you find something like that that paces or does very well versus sitting there trying to spin like, you know, turn your wheels and try to learn how to invest in individual stocks and different things like that, which I think over 80 percent of investors actually do a lot worse than the stock market. So am I telling you not to invest in your own? Absolutely not. I think you should do it and you should definitely learn about it. But this is for that person that um, does not have all the time in the world to invest as much time and energy into investing and learn, knowing about individual stocks, um, individual bonds, individual, um, you know, currencies and stuff like that. That's for you because you can start investing. It's not as hard as you think. It's just you need a coach, somebody to kind of walk you through. So that's just the point of this. I'm gonna go real quick because, like I said, I have somewhere to be. So it looks like I'm not gonna touch everything, but that's okay. If you have any questions, click the link in the bio. Go coachdannyrenee.com. I have a video there that kind of um, just goes over some of the most basic uh, financial techniques and rules and understandings that you need. And then obviously, if you want to book a session with me, just kind of get a quick overview, definitely click the link in the bio. But anyway, so most people, uh, when it comes to, um, say for instance, if they have $10,000, typical p- person, they get access to a bank account and they have a bank savings account. Most people do not look at what that average bank savings account is, which is less than 1%. You hear the term inflation and things like that a lot nowadays, but inflation, I think this past year has been like over 8%. So if you're getting less money in your regular bank account, then you are losing money by just sitting your money there. So there's reasons why you should have certain accounts, there's reasons why you should have your money going in different places because you want to be able to have your money outpace inflation at the very least, your money is growing each year with inf- with inflation, but even at the at best is you want your money to grow because when you decide to work for whatever age that is, that could be in the next five, 10 years, you need to know how much money you need to have saved up in order to make that decision. So if you have your money into a regular savings account, um, you are going to lose your money. I mean, I don't, I don't feel like I really have to do too much math. There is this, if your savings account is 0.01 or 0.02 or if you're in the CD or something, well, however low that is, but inflation is, let's say for instance, 1% and inflation is 8%, right? You lost 7% of your money. Would you like to gain and grow your money or would you like to continuously lose your money? A lot of times people are afraid of risk and stuff like that. But one of the risks that you fall into often is the risk of not doing anything. And as days, weeks, months, years go by, your the risk that you're exposing your to yourself to is the risk of not allowing your money to grow. So just keep that in mind. Um when it comes to you, you typically, as a lot of people throwing the term around nowadays of being an owner, you want to own your money. You want to be able to have control of your money, right? Not being a loaner. So when um, we get credit cards, right, the bank is typically loaning someone else's money to us. And I owe you, they're loaning, lo- loaning someone else's money to us. And we, <clears throat> we turn around and if we have an ongoing balance, like every 30 days or so, you're paying 22 to 25 to 30% of interest just to borrow somebody's money. So think about that. 22, 30% just to borrow somebody's money. In theory, it doesn't sound as bad when we first want to borrow that money, but some of us experience it, you know, over life that when we brought money, now we got to pay all this money back and we don't want to pay that money back when it's time. But just imagine if you were the reverse, 
you know, instead of giving your money to bank savings accounts and stuff like that, you're the person to, to be able to invest your money. Um, and then people are paying you. I mean, that's the beauty about bonds. And, you know, bonds is pretty much the credit card of, you know, big, co big companies because, you know, they need loans as well. Right. But imagine if you're getting that same interest that you're paying these credit card companies. So um, savings accounts, CDs, cash value, life insurance policies, they you hear as IULs, whole life and any of those forms, those have traditionally, statistically, this is not just me, but have had low rates of return. So that is uh, something that you have to take in consideration as well when it comes to um, you investing your money is like, where are you investing your money in? And sometimes people sell you a good story. And I always tell people it sounds great in theory, but until I see the paperwork and the historical performance, how has that done? And those are some things that your advisor or you should take in consideration when it comes to investing in your own money. Um, Way to return is key, like I was just saying, as far as those credit cards. Imagine if you were getting 20, 30 percent on um, just like you're paying that interest in a credit card. Imagine if your money was growing at that amount. That's that's what is important when it comes to uh, when it comes to, um, you know, any investment. Um, obviously, investing in mutual funds is a great way. There are a lot of uh, good funds out here. And pretty much what mutual funds is, you got a bunch of individual investors like myself, like you, whoever's watching this. You want to be to invest money, but you don't really know where to begin or you don't have um, without going too much into particulars. You see like a Warren Buffett and a lot of people like to follow Warren Buffett because he is the king of investing. But what a lot of people don't tell you is that when you study the history of finance right um regulations and all of that started uh coming into place like it was like 1933 they had like different laws and all of that being implemented and you, you have what i that's a whole different ball game, right but that dude has been investing since like the rules have been started so of course like he has an advantage over all of us because he's been able to be through all of those like different he's be through he's been able to go through all of those um you know, storms, when you had desert storm, things is happening with the military, when you have different polit politicians get into office, when you had, um, you know, the tech bubble, you know, crashes, all of those different things. Obviously, he's going to be a great investor, but he has so much money that he can take that money and invest in different companies to where he has a stake in a percentage. A lot of times when you invest in individual stocks and stuff that you get a percentage of that company, which that that percentage is very mediocre. Right. It's very small, depending on how much money you have. And obviously, the more money you have, the more of a percentage you own of that company. So the beauty about mutual, mutual funds is like people like you and myself, we can take our money and be like, hey, we want to invest money. So we take our money and we invest into all of these companies. Right. And then you have um, professional money managers. They're the ones that's actively trading on these accounts day in, day out. They're the ones studying who's going to be the next CEO. They're the ones that study in currencies and politics. And they're the ones that's doing all the work. And granted, you, a lot of times there's a, um, a percentage that you have to pay in order to do that. But they're the ones that's actively growing your money. So um, I, I want you guys to take that into consideration. You know, they have different funds. Like a lot of people love Facebook nowadays, Instagram. You hear about Amazon. You know, there are funds out here that have those companies in it as well um, to where you can take advantage of that upside of those also. So they have tech companies. You know, a lot of sometimes a lot of the, the different tech, com tech companies may be bundled into one. And a lot of times when you hear the term mutual fund, you're dealing with 150 over can be like up to 150 companies in one fund that if something happens to that one company, guess what? The rest of the companies are doing very well. So I'm cutting this short um, because like I said, you guys, I have to go. But um, again, next week, the Millennial Network Financial School Facebook group, definitely add yourself. This is going to be here. I should leave this up on my Instagram. I'm um, sorry, not my Instagram, my YouTube. And then again, I will see you guys next week. It's your girl, Coach Danny Renee, and I am out.